Today is January 19th, 2023. Criminal charges have just been announced against actor Alec Baldwin in connection with the shooting on the Rust film production set. But what are they? What are the maximum possible penalties upon any kind of conviction? What's the burden that the state needs to show of specifically what happened at trial? And what are the possible defenses? My name is Tom Grieve. I'm a former state prosecutor, criminal defense attorney. Let's get into it. Thank you to all you new viewers checking out the channel. Please consider subscribing to show your support, not only for the Second Amendment, but also for our humble channel to help us grow in the YouTube algorithm. With that, here we go. The first charge can be referred to simply as involuntary manslaughter. And for this charge to be proven in court, there must be an act of underlying negligence. Under New Mexico law, involuntary manslaughter is what's called a fourth degree felony and is punishable by up to 18 months in jail, as well as a $5,000 fine. This charge also includes the misdemeanor charge of negligent use of a firearm, which would likely merge as a matter of law under New Mexico law. The second charge, in other words, the other charge that he's facing in addition to the first one is involuntary manslaughter and commission of a lawful act. There's two ways that this can work in New Mexico. One is involuntary manslaughter and commission of an unlawful act. The other one is a lawful act. That's what the prosecutor here has opted for. This charge requires proof that there was more than simple negligence involved in a death. So this is not simple negligence. This is also, again, a fourth degree felony punishable by up to 18 months in jail, as well as up to a $5,000 fine. This charge includes a firearm enhancement or added mandatory penalty because a firearm was involved. The firearm enhancement makes the crime punishable by mandatory five years in jail. So again, mandatory five years jail. So that second one, much bigger than the first one, all right? Keep in mind, for those of you who may not know the justice system, those are the maximum possible penalties. Now, again, I did qualify that in the second charge that there's a mandatory five-year jail sentence. But generally speaking, most of the time when there's a maximum sentence, very few people receive those maximum sentences. So I don't want people to think, look, this is definitely what's going to happen. Anything that can happen as part of a case. And of course, all folks are presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. We do have an interesting and very relevant quote from the special prosecutor who was assigned as part of this case. I'm going to read it to you and throw it up on the screen. If any of these three people, Alec Baldwin, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, or David Halls, had done their job, Helena Hutchins would be alive today. It's that simple. She goes on to say that the evidence clearly shows a pattern of criminal disregard for safety on the Ross film set. In New Mexico, there is no room for film sets that don't take our state's commitment to gun safety and public safety seriously, end quote. Strong words and words that are frankly difficult to argue with. I think that many folks have pointed out that there are some pretty basic rules of firearm safety, and we're going to get to that a little bit later, that had they been observed, no one would have died here, all right? But first, what do they have to show in court? What are what we call the jury instructions? And for those of you who may be new here and you don't know what jury instructions are, Jury instructions are how we interpret into plain English the statutes, which can be kind of wordy and difficult to understand many times. So jury instructions are the instructions that are literally read by the judge allowed in court to the jury to tell them how they are supposed to apply the law to the facts to decide the case. So they are extraordinarily important. And guys, there's also a link to the New Mexico criminal jury instructions in our description box below. So you can browse around, take a look at what he was charged with, what he wasn't charged with. But I'm also going to be covering that right here. So specifically, we're focused on 14-231, which is the New Mexico Involuntary Manslaughter Essential Elements List. In order to find Alec Baldwin guilty, the state bears the burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt, which is a very high burden of proof and is in fact the highest burden of proof in the entire American legal system. So here's what the judge would say to the jury at the conclusion of the trial, should there be one. For you to find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter as charged in count one or two of the criminal complaint or indictment, however they word it there, the state must prove to your satisfaction beyond a reasonable doubt each of the following elements of the crime. Number one, Alec Bolden took possession of a loaded firearm and without checking it himself, cocked the hammer back, resulting in the discharge and death of one Helena Hutchins. Number two, Alec Baldwin should have known of the danger involved by pointing a loaded firearm at another person and cocking the hammer back. Number three, Alec Baldwin acted with a willful disregard for the safety of others. Number four, Alec Baldwin caused the death of Helena Hutchins. And number five, this happened in New Mexico on or about the 21st day of October, 2021. 
Now, Baldwin has made very few, if any, public statements, but it appears to be that his defense is going to be something to the fact that he's claiming that he only pulled the hammer back, he did not pull the trigger, and he didn't even pull the hammer back far enough to actually cock the gun. When the actor then let go of the hammer, the gun went off. As I already mentioned before, many different channels out there, I'd suggest checking out, for instance, the USCCA channel, because I know Kevin Michalowski did a great one on this, went through and said, look, they don't work that way. The firearms do not work the way that Baldwin is claiming. And I'm not saying that that's true or untrue. I'm simply saying that a lot of folks have done a lot of videos saying that what Mr. Baldwin is claiming cannot be the case. Watch those videos, you be the judge. Now as a note, Alec Baldwin is not the only person charged in connection with this incident. Rust Armor Hammer Gutierrez Reed will also be charged with two counts of involuntary manslaughter. Assistant Director David Halls, which the special prosecutor mentioned before, has already agreed to plead guilty to negligent use of a deadly weapon. So guys, before I go any further, I just want to say that I know that the vast majority of folks who watch our humble channel are actually not subscribers. Please take again a moment to consider subscribing. Click like, show your support for this channel as well as the Second Amendment. Also, please take a moment to share it around social media. I want to know, what are your thoughts on this? Is Alec Baldwin going to be getting convicted? Is he going to roll in order to testify against someone else? Is the case actually going to go to trial? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm curious to hear what people have to say. Lastly, then, of course, we get to the fact that this whole thing hinges on the fact that we have disregarded the basic rules of firearm safety. What are they? I'm going to throw them up on the screen, but I'm only going to focus on the first two as it relates to this trial. So number one, treat every firearm as though it is loaded or as if it is loaded. Number two, do not point it at anything you aren't prepared to destroy. The way that firearm rules work is that basically, if you violate any one of them, so long as you observe the other three, you should be okay, which is never an excuse for, of course, violating any one of them. But case in point, had he made sure that the firearm was cold, as they call it in Hollywood, and in other words, it was not loaded with any kind of live ammunition, that even if he did point it in an unsafe direction, you have an unloaded firearm. And likewise, the reverse is true. If you did have a firearm that's loaded, but you never pointed at anything that's unsafe to point it at, then once more, you're okay. That's the beauty of, of course, the rules of firearm safety, which I expect you're going to hear a lot about as part as this case goes on. I also look forward to hearing how the media screw up what are the rules of firearm safety. Let me know what you think is going to be your prediction on how they're going to be able to botch that one up. But trust me, it's coming, okay? What are some of the defenses here? Well, again, you really can't get around the rules of firearm safety. The whole thing is going to be really hinging on two particular factors. Number one, who bears the responsibility and accordingly the blame for ensuring this is a cold gun? The onset armorer who handed the gun to Baldwin and it sounds like indicated to him that it was cold and unloaded? Or does Baldwin also bear responsibility for that, which the special prosecutor seems to strongly suggest and imply by, of course, the mere act of bringing criminal charges because he failed to confirm and double check before directly pointing it at someone else and then starting to, at a minimum, pull back the hammer or at a maximum, potentially pulling the trigger. So who bears the responsibility for ensuring that the firearm is unloaded? That's number one. Number two is, of course, Baldwin's claim that, look, the firearm malfunctioned. I pulled it back. It should never have been able to go off. Check out the other videos. I'm going to link the USCCA one in the description box below. Let me know what you think about that. That's what I really think this case is really going to hinge on. The two big parts is, does Baldwin bear any kind of duty, which, of course, in order to have negligence, you have to have that duty, duty, breach, cause, harm, right? That's basic law school 101. Duty, does he have a duty to check the firearm? If he breached that duty, did it cause a particular harm? Duty, breach, cause, harm, the elements, the basic elements of any neg negligence case. That's what we're gonna be talking about here. And then likewise, again, is whether or not um, the firearm could operate the way that he's described in order to discharge. Guys, I also put a lot of other case law from New Mexico with statutes and cases in the description box below for your browsing and perusing. Please, of course, feel free to check that out. Thanks for staying this long. If you've not already done so, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.